got a visitor. Here? Yeah, it must be somebody important to use the warden's office. Hello, Hirsch. I speak to him alone, Warden? Yes, sure, Lieutenant Brenner. I said hello. You said more than that in my trial. I had to answer the questions they asked me, George. But next week I'll have served my six months. But what do you want from me? We've got an anonymous letter saying someone else drove that hit and run car. It's a slim lead, but we're working on it. Don't do me any favors. I wasn't driving my car that night. I wasn't in it. Nobody saw me in it. They would have believed me except for your statement at the trial. You were a cop. You worked with me. If you're innocent, as this new evidence seems to indicate, I want you cleared. George, when you get out next week, I want to do anything I can to help. Forget it, Brenner. I don't need your help. It's too late. Six months too late. Excuse me. Just a minute, Arnie. I'm very sorry, miss. Detective Potchek will see that you have no more trouble. Who was that? She tried to cash a check, claimed she was a policewoman from Montreal on vacation. Now, who is she? Policewoman from Montreal on vacation. I've nailed it, Lieutenant. Fine, let's see it. Oh, uh, Douglas, this is my son, Ernie. Hi. Sir Douglas? Yes, sir. Dear Commissioner, one of your men was sent away for a hit and run that was innocent. I know there was witnesses in court that saw his car, but I bet my life he wasn't in it. First, Lieutenant, the round letters, A, E, and O, like that, no deceit. If I had the guts, I'd sign my name, but I got my job to think about. I know he's due to get sprung. He should get a break. My conscience made me write this. Second, the straight up and down letters, like L and K, are elongated. Uh, squeeze tight, what we call subway writers. And third, see the way the writing slants down. Now, these three things. Take a look at this. Good, Douglas. That's it. <laughs> You weren't getting out till this afternoon. I, I was going to meet you. They let me out early. I wanted to meet you. The restaurant could have spared a cashier. Look at me. I, I'm a mess. My hair. I, I was doing the dishes. Jeannie, honey, I wasn't sure. Do I love you? I do. We're together and we'll stay together. Oh, I'm so glad you're home. I'm so glad you're home. Six 
months were so empty. The walls echoing every fight we ever had, every argument. No more. That was all my fault, but no more. We'll start all over again, right from scratch. I'll get a job. Oh, look, it won't be easy, but I'll get one. Not here. We'll go to Wisconsin. The restaurant will lend me the money. I've worked there for a year. My folks said we could stay with them till we get settled. Look, I've got to do this on my own. You will. You can. But not here. The record. Jeannie, I didn't do it. No matter what the judge said, no matter what anybody said, I didn't do it. Zelko, I want to ask you about this letter. I forgot to sign your name. I, uh, I don't know what you're talking about. You're telling me you didn't write the letter? Look, mister, I, uh, I got a job. My boss is in there. I should be working. Okay, yeah. I wrote it. If you had information, why didn't you come forward at the trial? I was afraid. But afterwards, well, I had it on my conscience. I couldn't stand it no longer, so I wrote the letter. I kept thinking of the poor Joe. How tough it would be after he got out getting a job. I know how tough it can be. Okay, now tell me what happened that night. I was out on a call. Coming back with the tow truck, it was around nine. Quarter after. Then I see Mr. Uh, this man. Mr. Who? He was standing by this car, it had a flat. He said, uh, fix it, I'll give you five bucks. So I put the spare on. Then I put the five in my pocket. Was it the same car? The same, the same license. He must have hit that drunk not more than 15 minutes after I finished. Not more than 10 blocks away. Look, if I said anything, I would have lost my job. I put the money in my pocket. The boss would have fired me. I understand. Now, Mr. Who? What? Who hailed you? It was dark. Just a guy. Not just a guy. You started to say Mr. Who. Names. Look, I swear, I didn't know his name. Hey, you gonna tell the boss? Loose. Jimmy Loose. He's in a book. He's not at home. He's at his place. Displays and window dressing. Loose? What can I do for you? Well, police now, huh? Care for a drink? Just information. You know a George Hirsch? Who? Hirsch. You were in his car on the night of March 5th, the night of a hit and run. What hit and run? Were you in his car? What car? The car with a flat you wouldn't fix yourself. Fifteen minutes before, it hit a pedestrian and ran. That car? That car hit somebody and ran? I came out of my house. This little old lady was standing there, helpless, you know. Didn't know one end of a jack from another. I was dressed going someplace. But she was so upset. I was going to do it myself. When I spotted this truck from the garage I use, I gave him a five spot. Say, wait a second. You think I was driving that car? This can get serious. Fifteen minutes after. I got ten witnesses. I went to dinner with a bunch of department store owners. I even picked up the check. You seem pretty sure of the night, but you don't know George Hirsch. Hirsch? Say, now that you mention it, I remember the papers. What have I got to do with him? You tell me. That's what I've been doing every day for the past week, Ernie. Checking the one ads. Now you get something. Sure. No, no thanks. Jean will be back from the restaurant pretty soon. She always brings them. What time is it? Year nine. She ought to be back now. Yeah, come on, have one. <laughs> That'd be funny if I ended up being grateful to the Brenners, wouldn't it? Well, we want to help, George. Both of us. 
Yeah, it'll pan out. You get a job. Yeah, she wants me to go to her folks, get a job out there. What's the matter with that? Oh, nothing. It... Now, where is she? I thought everything was all right now between you and Jane. Oh, it is. Fine. Oh, those six months talking through letters. We got to know each other in a way that's good, Jean and me. I got to realize the mistakes I had made. The way I used to act. The way a guy would turn his head when she walked by would make me fry inside. That's what started the arguments. For no reason, I'd blow my stack. Well, it's good you see it so clearly now. But I don't like the idea of taking favors from Jean's folks. And her having to work. I mean, I'm the man. It's my job to provide, and I'm not doing it. And nine o'clock. That night it happened. We had a fight that night. I slammed out of here. I told her I didn't care if she was gone when I got back. Now, where is she? What's holding her up? Hey, how did you get here? I asked where you were. Nothing yet? Not so far. Well, can I spell you? Pacek, you can. No, you go ahead, Roy. I'm taking a personal interest. Okay. Oh, I'll be back in an hour. Bring you some coffee. Fine. Someone's there. Yeah, Luce is in his office. He's had phone calls, visitors, but nothing to do with George Hurst yet. I just came from George's. Oh, anything? To get a job yet? No. His wife wants him to pack up and leave town. He doesn't want to go. Mm. Believe me, he'll take any help he can get, Dad. Even from me. Hey, what was that? Loose's door. Well, walking in here is if you own the place. I couldn't think of anyone else. What made you think of me now? I need a loan. Three hundred dollars. You've got to give it to me. Too far away from the mic. I couldn't get that clearly. Now I'll turn it up. I'm desperate. More. What is this? Me lend you three hundred dollars? For what? You pushing a little blackmail because the cops were here? Sure they were here. Who's with him? But it wasn't me driving that crummy car. You drove it. I need the money. We'll get away from here. George and I'll have a chance. I only want $300. That's George's wife. It's Jane Hirsch. Lieutenant Brenner, may I come in? Oh. Well, jo George isn't here. I know, I came to see you. About Jimmy Luce. Would you, would you like some coffee? No, thanks. We know about you and Luce, Mrs. Hirsch. You went to see him last night. I, I, I probably drink too much coffee. I don't know, I, I didn't have trouble waking up in the morning. George, no. No, he doesn't even need an alarm clock. He just opens his eyes and he's wide awake. A lot of men are like that, aren't they? Oh, but it takes me hours. You were seeing Luce, weren't you, Mrs. Hirsch? George did go to the movies that night. You took the car and Jimmy Luce was with you. There was nothing between Luce and me. George and I reached a stage where everything seemed wrong. We, we were always quarreling. Luce would come to the restaurant, and he kept asking me to go out with him. That one night, I said yes. But nothing happened. Not that night or any other night. George served six months for somebody else, didn't he? Don't you think he should at least have the satisfaction of knowing why he wasted his time? He could be cleared. His conviction could be reversed. The truth would be known. 
the truth. Is that all that matters? Would it give us any more than we've got now? For the first time, we have a real marriage. We didn't know each other then, George and me. Now we do. I'm going to hold on to it. I'm fighting for it, Lieutenant. You can't tell him the truth. I won't. But I think you'd better. but no job. Anything happen here? Just a newspaper call. They wanted to renew your job, wanted that. <laughs> Any beer? There should be some. George, let's get out of New York. Go anywhere you say. We'll just sell everything. Everything, including the car. Get rid of the car? Yeah. We might get enough for it to pay for bus tickets. I can't stand the sight of it. It, it reminds me. Well, the car's pretty beat up. Standing on the street all the time. Yeah, but we should get some money for it. Let's sell it. Well, I didn't know it was bugging you, too. I put the car in front of the house, I go to a movie, and an hour later, the car is seen four miles away, hitting somebody, running. And then it ends up right back in front of the house. Now, who would do that? And he put the car right back in front of the house. I keep thinking, must have been someone real close. Someone close? Now, you know, somebody real close. Someone who knew me. I keep thinking about it. I kept thinking about it up there. Who could it be? I mean, who would put the car right back in front of the house? That's what keeps pushing at me, eating away. Who would do that? Who would? Why? You want me to say it? You and Brenner. All right. I took the car. I was with Luce. That's what you all want me to say. All right. I'll get it. Hello? She's gone. Gone? Yeah, she gave it to me straight and left. I'm sorry. Look, I knew all the time she took the car, but I wouldn't let myself believe it. She told me and ran. Now, you gotta help me. I wanna know who Lucy is. Where are you? Look, Ernie, she's my wife. I have a right to know. Believe me, George, there's nothing between Jean and Jimmy Luce. Jimmy Luce. I don't care what time of night it is. Keep asking all of her friends. Mrs. Hirsch might try to contact them at any time. But crying out loud, I can take care of myself. That's right. Keep checking. I'll be here. Any sign? No, not yet, Roy. This is a large area to cover. We're doing the best we can. Ernie's out back. Did you get some coffee?
Don't move, Ponchak. So you're Jimmy Luce. So I am. So what? Where is she? Hirsch. This place is crawling with good. I don't know how you got in, but don't go crazy now. I was here ahead of you. I know how crawling it is. Don't use it, George. It'll blow any chance for you. You and Jean can still make it. You really know that, don't you? Where is she now? We don't know. I don't know either. You know it wasn't you she wanted, don't you? She loved me. She still does. I gave her a real rough time. You just happened to be around. Who said any different? I've only seen her once since. Last night she came in here to borrow 300. Only that once. That's true, George. We had this place bugged. We can play the tape for you. I ask myself the same question over and over again. In jail, you learn to think that way. Ask yourself questions, find the answers. The same answers. I kept pushing her away from me, never trusting her. I just did it again. Hey, brother. What did she say? No, don't take a statement. Keep her there. What was it? Was it about Jean? She just walked into my office. What did she say? Said she wanted to talk to me, to make a confession. Well, no, Roy, don't let her. Look, what good would it do? I mean, just tell them that, they, that she was trying to clear me, that the confession is a phony. It's not that simple, George. Now, look, I served my time. The sentence was served. That clears the slate. Well, the man she hit lived. That'll be taken into consideration, won't it? The judge will listen to us. He might give her a suspended sentence. I want to talk to her. Come on. Georgia, I wanted this to be between Lieutenant Brenner and me. I didn't want it to get complicated. It's not complicated. Nothing that you and I can't handle. You'll have to go through some sort of a hearing. The lieutenant says there's a good chance for a suspended sentence. That's not what I was worried about. From now on, that's all you'll have to worry about. <laughs> 